All right, just a friendly reminder. Tomorrow, your focus and your spice are due. Your map is due today. Tomorrow, your focus and spice are due. You have a test tomorrow. It'll be 25 minutes. So we're going down by one. On Friday, we begin writing week. You are going home with a DBQ and a short answer, a four short. So that's about three and a half hours. It's about, no, it's about two hours and like 40 minutes if you do it by time. Four SAQs. Four SAQs and a DBQ. So uh, keep that in mind. You have a busy weekend. On Tuesday when you come back, we are grading for correctness and formatting. So not just getting easy coast through, at least you get the formats, none of that. Expectations are always increasing in AP World. Are we having a great time with that? Yes, I know. You love it. So, for those of you on your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the invention that will give colonial powers direct rule? What invention will give colonial powers direct rule? Mendela. Telegram. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is, uh, what connects the Red Sea and Mediterranean Sea? What is it, Jackson? There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the gentleman who believes that it is white people have to go and spread Western civilization because the world depends on it. What is it, Katie? Kipling. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the dude who believes that um, if it wasn't for imperialism, white people would overthrow in industrialized towns. What is it, Maggie? On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name, what connects the Pacific and the Atlantic? Good. What is it, Jesse? On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the most important invention that facilitated both industrialization and imperialization? What is it, Logan? Railroads. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of... Uh, please tell me what is it called when I'm going to start setting up ports all around the world so my ships can pull into it. Good. What is it, Claire? On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the, what do we call Indian soldiers who fight for the British? Who are they, Maggie? You're killing it, by the way, back there. On your whiteboard, please tell me, the Sepoy Rebellion is about what? Good. What is it, Arima? Animal fat. On your whiteboard, the... After the Sepoy Rebellion, what dynasty falls in India? Good. What is it, Kate? Mughal. On your whiteboard, please tell me what company no longer exists after the Sepoy Rebellion. Good. What is it, Isabella? EOC. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is it called when Russia and the British are fighting, like pretend fighting, in Afghanistan? They never go to war, but they almost do. Ellen. Great game. Great game. On your whiteboard, what is the name of the city the British build? Oh, I would have come back. What is the name of the city the British build that will become a major trading hub? What is it, Noemi? All right, Singapore. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the weapon that is going to give Europeans the upper hand with 11 rounds per second. Good. What do we got? What do we got, Shabani? Maxim gun. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Uh, actually, let's go. Who can raise your hand and tell me where we left off? Avery. All right, perfect. British building ceiling up for. Got it. Africa imperialism. Here we go. Your new heading is Africa. 
Okay, when we talk about the division of Africa, we have a nickname, it's called the Scramble of Africa. You need to know that. Also, fun fact, that's the name of your first TBQ of the week, is the Scramble of for Africa. So, the largest players on, in Africa are the French, the Portuguese, the Belgium, and the English. You need to know that. Those are your biggest players. Now, the Germans are also there, but they're not very big players, and they get knocked off pretty quick. So, you need to know, Africa is carved up. It is known as the Scramble of Africa. The four big players are England, France, Belgium, and the English. English are going to start imperialism in Africa. They're going to start this whole process because they find gold and diamonds in Africa. Okay, so you need to know that King Leopold II of Belgium is going to create a commercial company or a commercial venture in the Belgian Congo. It is a company, not a colony. A colony is owned by a country. A commercial venture is owned by a person. So the Belgian Congo is owned by one dude and his name is King Leopold II. This is incredibly unique and very important, right Aiden? Yes, yes it is. So King Leopold II is going to own a private company and that private company is called the Belgian Congo. Africa is going to be a terrible, this is a terrible time to be in Africa if you're an African at this moment. Terrible time. Every place in the whole continent, you're getting, uh, you have white people who are being racist, they're just going to kill you indiscriminately, they literally don't give a shit about you. However, the worst place in Africa to be, which is pretty awful everywhere, is the Belgian Congo. Because literally, everything's only about profits. With a government, you have this, ah, government shouldn't kill its people. With a company, ah, it's all about profits. Okay, so that's a big distinguishment. Uh, you're going to write, Boer War. Okay, you're going to write, the first Boer over this whole continent, worse than term, really. Um, but you need to know, these Dutch people have two names. Boers, which are what we call Dutch farmers, and Afrikaners. And the spelling of Afrikaners is unique. Make sure you take a look at it, okay? They have two nicknames. If you're a Dutch person, you go by Boer or Afrikaner. So, you need to write this down. In 1815, the British take over South Africa and force the Afrikaners north. 1815, the British push the Afrikaners north. Okay. Now, I do want you to be aware that the Afrikaners, before the British even show up, are fighting with the indigenous people. Do the indigenous people want these white people here? No, they don't. They're fighting with them. Um, they're going to be fighting with them north in the mountains. So, the British push the Afrikaners into the mountains. While in the mountains, you're going to write this down, while in the mountains, the Afrikaners find gold. So guess where the British want to be now? In the mountains. So the Boer War breaks out between the British and the Afrikaners in the mountains. Okay? It's not the first push of the Afrikaners out. It is when the Afrikaners find gold and the British are like, well, shit. So, the Dutch are there. They're called Boers and Afrikaners. The du British show up, they take control over South Africa, and they're like, get the hell out of here. So they push them up into the mountains, and in the mountains, they're going to find gold. Then we have the actual Boer War begins, and the British and the Dutch Afrikaners are going to be fighting back and forth. You're going to put a star, and you're going to write. This is the only white versus white war. Oh my god, is that why we're studying it? Hello? Yes. 
in Africa. Okay. That was a dumb question. <laughs> we've we've studied a lot of white people killing white people. Yes. Why? Why is it the Boers have two names. They're Boers or Africans. Oh, so it's the same thing. It's what we said. Boers have two names. You said you're like Boers. They're like Dutch people. No, they're called Africans. So, you need to know it is a white on white conflict, which is super unique. It's the only time we're going to see it. And this will directly cause the Berlin Conference. Directly cause the Berlin Conference. Okay, so your next setting is the Berlin Conference. The Berlin Conference is 14 European countries get together in what city? Berlin. Berlin. That's why it's named the Berlin Conference. 14 European nations get together and divide up Africa amongst themselves. What is you know, missing here. Africans. They're dividing up Africa and there's no Africans present. It's just a bunch of white people saying, I want this. Okay? So, the Berlin Conference is 14 European nations, the United States, dividing up Africa amongst themselves. You need to know there are no Africans present and they lay the rules for conquering Africa. All you have to do is put your flag down and tell the other nations that this land's yours. That's all you got to do. So what are they trying to avoid, ladies and gentlemen? Who can raise your hand and tell me what they're trying to avoid, Vance? They're trying to avoid white-on-white -white crime. Those are the rules. All you have to do is put your flag down and announce it to the other 14 nations this is yours. And you are not allowed to kill white people. Those are the two rules. What is conspicuously left out of this agreement, Garrett? African woman. African woman. Well, they don't give a shit about her. Culture. They really don't care about African life. You can kill as many Africans as you want, and the other 13 nations won't give a shit. Okay? Does this show you how little they care about Africa? And the people there, for sure. Okay? All right, types of colonial rule is your new heading. First one is concessionary companies. Concessionary companies. These are commercial ventures or businesses. Who is the perfect example of this? What place is the perfect example, Alex? Macy. King Leopold. King Leopold's the Belgian Congo. So in there you need to have an example, Belgian Congo. Yeah, it's a private, uh, it's a commercial venture or a private company. Belgian Congo. It's the only one you got. EOC doesn't exist anymore. So, concessionary companies are private companies. This is the worst place to live. You do not want to live in a place that everyone's a employee. Not ideal. Your second type of, go uh, of governing is called direct rule, and the French love it. You're going to put France next to it because they're the biggest uh, fans of it. You're going to put a big star, and you're going to write the most destructive to culture. Underneath it, you're going to say the colonial power replaces local culture with their own. Okay, so, in France, they take over Algeria. Algeria, by the way, has a huge portion of the Saharan Desert. However, since their direct rule, everyone in Algeria had to dress like they do in people and with, dress just like the people in France. So, you have people in Algeria wearing floor-length dresses, long sleeves, high collars, and you have to curl your hair and pin it up just like your traditional French uh, peasants. Does that sound doable in the Saharan Desert? No. If you go to school in Algeria, 
you are going to learn about the four rivers of France. And you are going to learn about the 15, uh, the 14 regions of France. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as a poor kid in Algeria, are you ever going to go to France? No. Will you ever see any of these four damn rivers you learned about? So it is completely useless, but they're trying to change the culture, and it starts with education. It's incredibly disruptive. It's incredibly destructive to culture, and it is the harshest. Okay. Your third type is known as indirect rule. Now, if the French likes direct rule, who likes indirect? The British. The British prefer this, except where? India. India is direct rule. Everywhere else, they do indirect rule. The English really like this one. This is kinder to culture, and you're going to put it in air quotes. Why is it in quotes? Not. It's, still not, it's great. still not great. Their culture would be better if no one was coming in and taking over. Can we agree? However, it's less destructive. You do need to know that they put locals into government and tell those government officials what to do. So, and for instance, Ethiopia, uh, Sudan, where the English controlled. They would have Sudanese people in government, but who's telling the Sudanese government what to do? The British. So it's kind of like a puppet kind of show. Okay? But it's kinder. You at least are getting told what to do by people of Sudanese. What do you got? So, um, I know some of the French have that in school and learning French. I think it's like No, England controlled Egypt for a while. However, uh, if they may be able to choose what they were forced to learn French. Interesting. Now, I think they would be forced to learn English because they were colonial, but they got their independence in the 1970s. And so I would think. What language do they speak in? Circuses. Circuses? Something. Fairy. Fairies. I also in the Cape Verde yesterday, they said this. Arabic. Arabic. There you go. They also have Farsis. Farsis is the word I was coming up with. Couldn't come up with that one. What? Okay, so. You need imperialism. In Australia. You were saying that in like the British Sudanese, right? Sudanese, yeah. Um, it was so it was run by Britain, but it was they had Sudanese people in power. So but were there still like black people in the Oh, for sure. There's tons okay, of yeah. white people wandering around. Okay. Not tons. I mean, England's a small country, but still white people. But so India is the only person that direct rule. Direct Why is Britain India a direct rule? And all their other colonies are indirect. Jackson. Support rebellion and why else? It makes sense. Garrett? And you had the most resources. Had the most resources. They're making the most money off of it. They wanted to make sure it was managed exactly how they needed it to. Okay, so imperialism in Australia. You need to know that Australia is a penal colony. What is a penal colony? Shabani. Made up of prisoners. So all the debtors, murderers that England didn't want to have sitting in a jail cell, they put them on a ship and sent them to Australia. Early on, it was pretty much a death sentence. However, later, it must have been nice. You got off. There was like restaurants, bars, all that stuff, you're just on the other side of the world. <laughs> and then, and gold was discovered in 1851, just know that gold was discovered, and then regular poor people. Are wealthy people moving there? No. no. But poor people, uh, middle class people like you and me, are going to move there in order to get a better opportunity. Because keep in mind, in England, everything is based on social class and your last name. Okay, if you leave England, then you can rise up on your own bootstraps here. So like the gold fortune. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Uh, Pacific Islands imperialism. You just need to know that whaling is going to be a major industry. That's all you really need to know. Why do we kill whales? Blubber. Blubber. And blubber is used in candles, makeup, cooking. Uh, whale bones are used for everything from hairbrushes all the way to piano keys. Uh, it's a huge industry. So that's all you really need to know. Why is that sad? But what about cows? No, but like, they're so majestic. Yeah, they are. Yeah. 
I could finish this so we could argue what animals we should keep and not. Okay. Is this recording? Yes, we are. Okay. You also need to know you're going to write down the word tropical dependency and you're going to put a big star next to it. Tropical dependency. Put a big star next to it. This is, you can put it anywhere you want. Tropical dependencies are when a country depends on their European power to subsidize their entire economy and to run their governments. Tropical dependencies are also sm uh, are when we have small numbers of Europeans over and government over indigenous populations. Wait. Tropical dependencies is when a country depends on the European powers to subsidize their economy. It can also refer to when very few white people govern millions of natives. There's two terms for it. Okay, so that's a tropical dependency. We are going to create Africa. Have you ever wondered why Africa is such a shit show? Like today in 2019? For instance, yesterday, as of yesterday, 513 people died of Ebola breakout. Again, it just started out. They just finished a rise of 33 people dead. Then they literally declared Ebola has been cured in that part of Africa, and it just popped up like a week and a half ago somewhere else, and 513 people are killed. There's a cure to Ebola. There are some people who are living, and a lot of people are dying because of it. If you've ever wondered why Africa is such a shit show and they can't pull it together, it's because we, as Europeans, have created an tropical dependency. All of those economies depend on who? Europe. Europe. So when the Europeans leave post-World War I and World War II, depending on where, what is going to happen to those economies? Plummet. They plummet. So then all of these economies who have become dependent on manufactured goods from their imperializing powers, they're going to do whatever they can to get those products. So they're going to start purchasing them. Is purchasing creating an economy? No. So all we have done is put these one self-sustaining economies in a very, very cyclical negative pattern, and that is why Africa is such a shit show. Same thing with South America, which we're going to get to here in a second. South America is kind of a shit show. Can we agree? Especially Venezuela right now. Why? Because we made all of those countries in South and Central America depend on what country? the United States to keep their economies intact. So when the United States couldn't subsidize all these economies and pulled out, what happened to all these countries? Collapse. Their, again, their economies started collapsing. And they couldn't subsidize it because we, didn't, we took away those skills from them. And that is why South America and Central America are kind of a shit show. Some countries are doing better. Some countries are doing worse, like Venezuela, which is a disaster at this moment. It's a humanitarian disaster. People are literally starving in hospitals, to death in hospitals. What do you got? What does it mean that self-development economy? It means we are buying most of your products. We are selling you all of your products. You depend entirely on us. Just that you depend entirely on your parents, correct? Yeah. They provide your food. They provide your shelter. If you had another person step in and help pay for some of that cost, that would make you less dependent on your parents, correct? Yeah. However, if your parents, God forbid, died, stop paying for anything, is that going to sh rock your entire world? Yes. That's a subsidized economy. Okay. U.S. imperialism. Speaking of the devil, here we go. James Monroe is going to write the Monroe Doctrine. Okay. There are two things you need to know about the Monroe Doctrine. It tells Europeans they're no longer able to colonize anywhere in the Western Hemisphere. That's what it is. Two things you need to know about it. It was originally done to protect the United States from industrialized powers being too close. Think about it. We're the only industrialized power in the Western Hemisphere. We're it. Do we want other industrialized countries in our backyard? No, because industrialized powers are the only ones who could actually fight us and beat us, correct? So, 
we wanted to protect ourselves, so we stopped all industrialized powers from conquering any more colonies in the Western Hemisphere. The second thing you need to know, the United States is going to then use that to justify imperialism in the Western Hemisphere. So, we do not allow Europe to have colonies. However, guess who's going to colonize all of it? Yes, yeah, so why would we, if, of course in your Africa maps you notice the United States is not on it, correct? Why would we go all the way to Africa when we can just steal the shit from South America? It's closer. Oh, we would. The United States is absolutely an imperialist power. Okay? We wouldn't go to Africa. No, we wouldn't, because we got closer. What? That's adorable. Yeah, no. Ladies and gentlemen, no. We are not. We are using it for our advantage. So much so, you need to know the United States is going to buy Russia in, 19, in 1867. We buy Alaska. We buy Alaska. Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, sorry. We buy Alaska from Russia in 1867. Oh, my God. You do need to know in 1875, we are going to form a protectorate over Hawaii because we threw a coup. What is a coup? I tell you this word for the Ottoman Empire. What's a coup, Macy? Go over the yeah, we're going to overthrow the Hawaiian government. We're going to overthrow Queen Lulalika Lini Luni. I don't know what her real name is, but it's something with every consonant and vowel. Okay, we're going to overthrow a queen. Does anyone know the dude who did it? No. If you're going to buy pineapples, what company are you buying from? Pineapple. Dole. Dole. Dole is going to be the guy who overthrows. Why would Dole want to overthrow the Hawaiian government? He wanted to make more money off of his pineapple, so he orchestrated a coup for the United States government. Why would I make that up? <laughs> Why do we? Pineapple still eat. Literally overthrew yeah. the government. Yeah. Yeah, and if you go to Hawaii today, like, there's a huge uh, dole plant and, like, huge facility there. They've taken over, like, the, most of the big island. You need to know the United States overthrew a coup. Yeah. What do you got, Vance? I missed the point where the very first one is that it's not allowed in this country's countries. To take over any part of Western Hemisphere. Okay, Cuban, Spanish Cuban American War. Now, if you look around UT, you've seen those big historical site signs. Yes. Okay. There's one that's going to talk about the Rough Riders. There's a bunch of people here in Tampa that call themselves the Rough Riders. They are in all of your stupid parades and stuff like that. Uh, maybe your parents are a part of it. I don't know. What it's based on is the Spanish American War, Spanish Cuban American War. Why is it a Tampa thing? Because Teddy Roosevelt. You don't need to know that. You can listen for a second. Teddy Roosevelt and the rest of the Rough Riders are going to leave. They're going to stay at UT. That was a, a hotel at that time. They're going to stay at UT. They're going to ride to the port and then get on a ship and head to Cuba. That's why. Hmm? He's a Rough Rider? No, he's not a Rough Rider. No, he just Well, there's like signs. So weird, yeah. Okay, so... That is why it's a Tampa thing, the Rough Riders. What is it really what you need to know? The USS Maine is going to be sunk in Havana by the Spanish. We're going to declare war. USS Maine is going to be sunk in the harbor of Havana, and the United States is going to go to war. The only thing you really need to know, out of it, we get the Philippines. What do you get? Oh, wasn't it? No. I don't think it was a man. Okay. I don't think it was a man. I don't know. It's Commodore Matthew Perry. I don't know what ship was. All you need to know is that we're going to get it. You need to know that Emilio, Al, this dude, Aguinaldo, sure, he's, a, uh, he's Filipinese, and he's going to lead revolt against Spain because he's pro-U.S. Right here. Pro Emilio Aguado, he's a Filipini, uh, he's Filipinese, maybe? No, Filipino. Filipino. There you go. He's <laughs> Filipino. Uh, leads revolt against Spain, and he's pro-U.S., so you do need to know that. All right. 
So, continuing with the U.S., you need to know the Panama Canal is built by Teddy Roosevelt. Is there a difference between a Teddy Roosevelt and an FDR? Franklin Delano Roosevelt? Yes. yes! They're two different people. If you show up in World War II and start telling me about Teddy Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt at that point was about 80 years old living his best life, okay? He was out west shooting animals, all that, okay? That was his thing. FDR is the one in the presidency, and he's the one in the wheelchair, okay? They're two separate people. It annoys me. Yes, they're cousins. And they're modern day related to Anderson Cooper, fun fact. Okay. Teddy Roosevelt is going to build the Panama Canal. Look at the front. There's a slide. He's going to build the Panama Canal. He uses it. He uses the Monroe Doctrine to justify it. Now keep in mind, does the United States control Panama? No. So, keep in mind, James Monroe is going to stand in front of Congress and say, no one is allowed to colonize. We are now protecting all of the Americas. Cool. Teddy Roosevelt is like, yeah, you know that document that we said that we're now protecting you? We're now going to take over Panama. And people in Panama are like, what? So you said that you now protect us, and you said you now are going to help us, and then you get to come in and take over a country? It's like saying I am the President of the United States, and then me walking into Trump's Oval Office and saying I'm the President. And Trump's like, what the hell are you talking about? You can't just say it, and it's true. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm the President. That's exactly what we did with the Monroe <laughs> Doctrine. Do you think Panama wanted us to build a Panama Canal there? No. No, they did not. Okay? We just said, we're now here. Why couldn't the Panamese fight back? They're not industrialized. So guess what? We used the Monroe Doctrine to take over Panama and build the canal. Okay? <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Okay. Japan. You need to remember for tomorrow that Commodore Matthew Perry is the one who opens up Japan. Okay, if you remember that and you don't have to write it down, you need to know that for tomorrow. You need to know that Japan industrializes, you need to write this down, Japan industrializes while China does not because Japan is secular and less bureaucratic. secular and less bureaucratic, so they're faster moving, okay, and that's the big thing. You also need to know the Sino-Japanese War is going to give Japan Korea. Why does Japan win Korea? Industrialized. Because Japan's industrialized, Korea is not. Sino-Japanese War. I'm trying to hurry because there's a couple other things I need to tell you and I want to review. Okay, you need to know uh, social Darwinism. Social Darwinism is at the bottom. Social Darwinism is a scientific belief. If it's a scientific belief, it's a scientific fact. No. no, it's a scientific belief. They made up science to prove that it was, well, to say it was correct. Is it proved correct? Yeah. No. Social Darwinism says that because white people industrialized, the gods made them more superior, or God made them more superior. Because white people industrialized, God made them superior. Because remember, Darwin said uh, the survival of the fittest, yes? They're going to say, because white people have adjusted the best to this new world, white people have to be the best. What bullshit. All right, what? No, so they used it. They uh, shifted it and stole what they needed to prove that white people are awesome. To justify, well, sort of. Thank you, Vance. It's always <laughs> nice to see you, too. All right, a couple things you need to know. You need to know that racism and in colonies increase when white women show up. Who can explain that to me? Why is because white women show up? More racism and segregation. Why? Antonio? 
Ah, uh, no. No white woman is going to be dating a native for sure. That's never going to happen. Macy? Is it because the men like, protect the There you go. Okay. So, with there's no white women around, are the men sitting around in prayer at night? No. No. What are the men doing? Getting like all the... Getting wet. <laughs> getting wet. That is the official term we're discussing in AP World. They're getting wet. Yes. The men are going to go out and hang out with the natives. Okay? They're going to be making lots of mixed babies and all that stuff. We know that. But as soon as white women come, okay, are the men allowed to go hang out with the natives? No, no they are not. So then we're going to become creating a very racially segregated society. Keep in mind, this goes back to our pre-industrial colonies, just like the English kept all the families together, pushed all the natives away. Same thing that's happening. You need to know that the last emperor in China is in 1911. No. Yes. But he's like a two-year-old kid. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You need to know that the Zulu are going to create a national identity that hates British people. And still persistent to this day, actually. The Zulu create a national identity that's uh, resistant to British. Zulu are an indigenous tribe in Africa. They don't have their own nation, which is why they, uh, they call themselves the unconquered. It's not like this. Yes, it's a I don't know. Um, no, on your whiteboards, you people. On your whiteboards, here we go. Would you like to review or do you want to talk about nonsense? Because I'm fine. I have uh, four more times i got to do this whole speech. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of the gentleman who's going to help the U.S. overthrow the Spanish in the Philippines? Good. Who is it, Logan? Perfect. On your whiteboard, the Americans get the Philippines in what war? What is it, Katie? On your whiteboard, please tell me what people created a national identity that rejected British people. Who is it, Vendela? Zulu. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the theory that white people industrialized so God clearly made them superior? Good. Sadie. What is the name of the gathering of 14 nations to divide up Africa in order to save white people? I'm getting hurt. Wouldn't that be just the worst thing? Ben. <laughs> Berlin Conference. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of the U.S. president who's going to build the Panama Canal? I will not accept Roosevelt. FDR is uh, maybe two years old at the time. Good. Who is it, Natalie? Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt or Theodore Roosevelt. Okay, not Franklin. Goodbye.